In this video, we're going to talk about a new operation that you can do to two vectors called the cross product. Um, basically, what the cross product does is if you have a vector u and you have a vector v and you take their cross product, it's going to give you a new vector, uh, a new vector whose uh, special property is that it's going to be orthogonal, which means meets at a 90 degree angle, same as perpendicular. It's going to be orthogonal to both of the other two vectors. So for example, let's say here's two vectors. Let's say um, you have vector u and you have vector v or something like that. And you take their cross products. The cross product is going to look something kind of like this. Um, notice, it's going to be kind of hard to show you. Um, here, let me fix these. I'll just do it this way. So notice that it's orthogonal to not just one vector, but also another vector as well. It's orthogonal to both of them uh, at the same time. All right, so that's that's the main thing you need to remember about cross products is the cross products going to be orthogonal to both of these guys. So here I've got two vectors drawn and so the cross product of these two guys would look something kind of like this. Notice that it meets both of these at a right angle as you can see here. Uh, now one result of this that, that's pretty immediate is that this wouldn't make sense in just two dimensions. If you think about it, if you just had an x and y axis and your vectors were just in, in two dimensions like this, there it would be impossible to always have a vector that's orthogonal to both of them in that plane uh, because when it, whatever vector you would draw that would be perpendicular to one of them probably wouldn't be orthogonal to the other one as well and so the only way to get a vector that's always orthogonal to both of those is to you know come out in a third dimension so the, the, the short of it, uh, the point that I'm trying to get at is that you can only take cross products when your two vectors u and v are three dimensional vectors. It makes no sense to try to take a cross product of two dimensional vectors. Okay, they have to be three dimensional vectors. All right, now there's a lot of questions that we might not fully answer in this video. We'll have another video where we cover some extra theory because, you know, uh, some questions that might come into your mind, which we're not going to answer right this second, is, you know, how do you know that, you know, the cross product isn't this vector because it's orthogonal to u and v? Or how do you know it's not uh, this long or this long or or this long? You know, how, how do you know the length of the cross product? Because technically all of those are, are orthogonal to both U and V. So we'll answer those types of questions in a later video. All right, now the, the next thing I want to talk about is, okay, now that we know what a cross product uh, does, how do you find it? Like if I actually handed you a vector U and a vector V, like what do you do to get this new guy? So let's talk about that next. All right, so let's say we have one vector, we'll call it u1, comma u2, comma u3, and a similar vector for vector v. And you want to take their cross product. The way that you get a cross product is you have to do a determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. Now, this is bringing up some old math from an old math class. Maybe you might have seen this in... Uh, definitely would have seen it in linear algebra if you've had linear algebra. Uh, you may have seen it in like a college algebra class depending on how advanced that class was. Um, but you need to know how to take determinants of matrices. So uh, I'm assuming you know how to do some of this already. Um, if not, you're going to have to catch one of our other videos. But let's say you're doing U cross V. Then you're going to write on the top row I, J, K, always. Then you're going to write u1, u2, u3 is the second row, and then v1, v2, v3 is the third row. And if you compute this determinant, you'll get your cross product. Um, I'll go ahead and write out what the next line would be. Um, most people do three by three determinants by hand using something called cofactor expansion or expansion by minors, um, and that's that's what we're going to do as well. So I'm kind of giving you a crash course on this right here. To get this determinant, the basic idea is to break it up into a, a bunch of little smaller determinants and then combine those answers together, which are, are obviously easier to do. So for consistency's sake, I want you to always expand 
along the top row. Remember expansion by minors. So we're going to expand along this top row and we're going to have three parts to the determinant. We'll have a part with I, we'll have a part with J, and we'll have part of the determinant from K. All right. Now the coefficients of I, J, and K are going to be um, what are called minors and so to get these minors to get the the coefficient of the I you can do this mentally you don't actually have to write it on your paper and mess it up with pencil marks or whatever we're gonna delete the row and column that I is in so just mentally mark the row and the column out that has I in it and you see I have four terms left over we're gonna make a little mini determinant of u2 u3 v2 v3 out of these guys now two by two determinants you definitely should be familiar with because that's something we do a lot um, some instructors kind of you know don't really get into three by three determinants too much but um two by two determinants you should definitely know uh, we're going to do the same thing for j delete the row and column j is in you see the four entries left over we'll have uh, U1, U3, V1, V3. And then in a similar way, we'll have U1, U2, V1, V2 here. So I have these three mini determinants here called minors. And then there's also another little twist, and I know I'm throwing a lot at you here. The overall signs for these guys, you have to add an, an additional positive, negative, positive for these guys. Um, now I'm not saying the final results will be positive, negative, positive, but we'll leave this sign alone. We'll make this negative and we'll make this positive. So plus minus plus. Now if this middle determinant winds up being negative, well then a negative negative would turn it back into a positive, but, but you do have to put a minus sign here. All right. And then once you compute these three guys, you'll have your answer. All right. Um, now, if that seems a little confusing, don't worry about it. We're going to do an example for these guys coming up shortly, but I want to kind of keep this video short. Let me show you what's coming in the next video. Um, we're actually going to do a cross product of two vectors. So you can go ahead and fast forward to the next video and you can watch us do an example.